Let's go, y'all. Happy Thursday. How was everybody doing? I appreciate you guys tuning in. Tonight is going to be amazing. I'm super excited. Talking to one of my new friends from Instagram, Logan, who is an out-of-town investor. He's going to tell his story, his journey, um, on how he was able to scale a massive real estate business in just under three years. Um, so again, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. My name is Anthony Lee, A. Lee Real Estate, um, licensed agent here in Pennsylvania, team leader, good neighbor real estate team um, here in Philadelphia, helping people buy, sell real estate, investment properties. Reach their real estate goals using real estate to reach financial freedom. Uh, I think Logan. All right, there we go. You got it? I'm in, man. What's going on? Nothing much, man. How are you, Logan? I'm doing good. Happy Thursday. Excited to be here. Same, same. I appreciate it. Thursday's always like the the weird day because it's like, yo, you almost made it through the week, but you got one more day to go out there and crush it. One more day. That's right. That's right. Hey, but when you're a real estate investor, man, every day is Friday. Every day is exciting. Every day is ready to rock and roll. <laughs> right. One of my friends had to remind me yesterday. Yesterday I was battling with some contractors and some some uh, inspections, and he was like, "Would you rather deal with your own problems, or you rather go to your, Would you rather go back to your old job and have your job tell you what to do?" I That's said, right. "You got a point there. Let me not complain." I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, ultimately we get to choose whether we're going to complain or we're, whether we're going to be excited, whether we're going to be sad, whether we're going to be happy. And regardless of whatever your industry you're in, like you have that choice. For sure. For sure. Well, definitely. We appreciate you. Appreciate you for joining us, Logan. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Anthony Lee, A. Lee Real Estate. Um, I was telling people I'm a licensed agent here in Philadelphia. Uh, but Logan, can you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, who you are, where you're from, and what business are you in? Yeah. Uh, and first off, I think like, thank you so much for having me on here. It really is an honor and a privilege. I appreciate you so much for, for reaching out and letting me be on your podcast. You're obviously doing big things in Philly um, and just super, super excited to share my story with your audience. And hopefully we can add some value to them, maybe entertain them, but at least give them a couple smiles along the way. So uh, so yeah, so my name is Logan Manzanares. I live in Bozeman, Montana. So if you guys follow Anthony, that's on the other side of the country. <laughs> it's right below Canada, a little bit above Colorado and Idaho and Wyoming. Uh, so it's kind of trapped right in there. Uh, I've been in real estate for the last three years. Uh, and before that, I was in the fitness business. And we grew a, s a successful fitness business that allowed us the opportunity to invest in real estate. And that's kind of where we are today in 2022. And now we no longer have the fitness business and we're all in on real estate investing. All uh, right, that's dope. So Montana, I mean, what, what's the weather like in Montana right now? So right now, okay, so this is great. So today it was beautiful, right? 55 <laughs> degrees, 60 degrees, amazing. Tomorrow, we're gonna have three feet of snow on the ground, right? <laughs> or three, wow. three inches, not three feet, three inches of snow. Okay. So, uh, so this time of year, it definitely, it fluctuates a lot but montana obviously is known for its mountains we have amazing ski resorts we have we're actually really close to big sky which is the second biggest ski mountain in the united states right behind Vail. so we have lots of tourism coming in for that we're also where i live i live in bozeman we're the gateway to yellowstone so a lot of people have seen the show yellowstone um and so anybody who wants to go to yellowstone they fly right into bozeman which is where i'm at and that's how they get into the parks nice okay so you said you are in real estate now, but prior to that, you were in, you said, the fitness business. So yeah. what were you, a, a trainer? You had a gym? Were you in Herbalife? What, what did you have going on? Yeah, that's a great question. So I got my degree from Montana State University. That's actually what brought me to Bozeman. Um, I got that in 2011. After I got my degree, I was a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer at a big box gym. So think of like, think of like, um, like 24 um like all access 24 7 or or gold gym something like that like it was, it was a gym very similar to that right and then i left i left that gym in 2013 to start my own gym and so from 2013 to 2021 we we had an actual physical brick and mortar location and then we actually beginning at the end of 2021 into 2022 we actually went 100 percent online 
And then again, about a month ago, we actually sold our, our fitness business. Uh, and now we are all in on the real estate investing side of the game. So why, why go from fitness to real estate? Like, when did you decide, like, all right, we want to start jumping into real estate? How did real estate even come about for you? Yeah. So it was like 2015 or 2016. Um, I was like, what is that? Probably two years into running my business. I was like banging my head against the wall, man. Banging my head against the wall. I was trying to figure it out. I was working from sun up to sundown, training people. I was, so when I, when, when I say I started a business, I started a gym, like I was the business, I was the gym. It was just me. Um, and I trained clients. I was a trainer. So I trained clients from sun up to sundown. And then I started to try to hire people as I started to get a little busier. And I didn't know how to hire people. I didn't know how to manage people. I was like, man, this sucks. I'm like paying somebody money and cutting my profits and I'm no longer making as much money, but I'm working twice as hard. And so that's when I started realizing that I need to do a little self-education. And so there was a guy, his name was Eric Cressy. And he made this post, I can still remember this post. He's like, one of the greatest advantages I ever did was I had a commute to my gym. Now this is Eric Cressy talking. He said, he said he had a commute to his gym about 30 minutes each way. He's like, okay. and I turned my car into a library. He's like, I started listening to audiobooks, And it was like, it allowed me to read without having to basically spend more time, which I was I already didn't have enough time to begin with. And when I read that post, I was like, oh my gosh, like I have about a 15, 20 minute drive to my gym every single day as well. Right. And so I was like, wow. So the first thing I did is I downloaded the Audible app. And the first book I bought was a book called Money, Master the Game. Maybe you've heard that. It's by Tony Robbins. And it's all about the stock market, right? All about the stock market, talking about um, Vanguard and talking about annuities and uh, returns and fiduciaries. And I was like, wow, like this is really cool. And so I went to, uh, to the gym the next day. And again, I was one-on-one trainer. So a lot of my clients were actually pretty successful people because they were being able to pay, you know, $50, $60 an hour. And so one of my clients, he was kind of like my mentor, right? He's one who kind of talked about business. And I told him like, dude, I just read this book about uh, the the stock market, yada, yada, yada. And just kind of, just kind of chuckled. And he's like, you know what, Logan? He's like, you should go read The Millionaire Next Door, right? Okay. And I was like, okay. So I was just, I was like, okay. And so then I went and downloaded The Millionaire Next Door. And if you read The Millionaire Next Door, or if anybody else has, they know the whole book is about being really frugal, right? It's like saving your way to wealth. And your biggest asset is your home. And I read that book. And then I went to my wife and I was like, Katie. So my wife's name is Katie. And I was like, I know how to become a millionaire. We just got to save our asses <laughs> off, right? <laughs> and she was like, okay, Logan. I think I liked the other one a little bit better because I was obviously I told her all about the, about the money match of the game and like what Tony Robbins was talking about. And then I was like, something still just wasn't quite jiving. And I remembered this book called Rich Dad Poor Dad that someone had once recommended me many, many, many years ago. And so that was actually the third book that I picked up and I downloaded and that book completely transformed the way I think. And if anybody's read that book, I know you have almost every single person who's in real estate um, has read that book. The gist of it was that the rich don't work for money, right? You have your, you have your money work for you. And I was just like, wow, like, okay. And so like in the fitness business, I realized that I was working for money and I was never gonna get rich working for money. And so it just allowed me to think a little differently. Uh, and then ironically, probably the two or three books down the road. So now as I was hooked on this reading thing, educating and trying to fill my, my brain with knowledge. And I found this book called the E-Myth. And so the E-Myth, if anybody has read that book, it literally talks about how to systematize your business, how to create processes, how to create uh, a way for you to not just get owned by a business, but actually own a business that operates without you. Right. And um, my, I was just like, okay. And so that kind of gave me the, the light bulb moment to start to figure out how to actually create a business rather than me just being a personal trainer, just being the artist. Right. And so over the next couple of years, I started to build these processes and systems that kept on like trying and like, I still was like still struggling, but at least I had hope. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as an entrepreneur, as you know, Anthony, sometimes hope is the most powerful thing you have because it feels like <laughs> you're like working your butt off from sun to sun down and you ain't getting anywhere. But like right. there's a lot of times where you're like, you don't even make money or sometimes as a, as, as a business owner, you can actually lose money. Uh, but it, at that point, I had, I had this hope and I had this like belief that I could make it happen. And so in 2017, um, I ended up finding a gym mentor and his name is Alex Hermosi. A lot of people know who he is now. He's actually pretty famous. Oop. 
There yep. you go. And so I end up, I end up finding, I end up finding a, a mentor named Alex Ramosi, who again, he's actually pretty famous on YouTube now. At the time, nobody knew who he was, neither did I. And I literally gave him all of my money, which at the time was about $10,000. Uh, <laughs> and he said that he could fill my gym up. And little did I know that he was, he, he, he undersold me. Uh, <laughs> and so I went from having like 30 clients, it took me almost five years to get 30 clients. And I, I signed up 36 clients in the first week. We ended up signing up 100 clients in the first month, and we went from doing like 5,000 a month to 50,000 dollars in a month. And uh, that was kind of like the trajectory that got my fitness business off the ground. We were able for the next couple of years to be able to stack cash, as as we called it. And um, yeah, and all the whole the whole time was always like learning about real estate and trying to figure it out and watch bigger pockets. The podcast was listening to it. I, I was self educating, and then finally in 2019, I had an opportunity to buy our first investment property. And it was a HUD foreclosure that I had a real estate agent who was, uh, who was a gym client of mine. And I told him about my dreams and aspirations of being a real estate investor. And he found this HUD foreclosure. We put in two or three different offers over the course of about four or five months. And we finally ended up getting accepted. And we put down 25% down and a cash flow about. So, I, so that house was, let me think if I, if I remember the numbers, it was like a $240,000 purchase price. We put 25% down, which was about fifth or... $60,000, $65,000. And our payment on it was about 1200 bucks. And I'll be charged like $1,900 in rent. So I think our, our spread was about $700. Right. And so that's how we got into the game of real estate. And we did that a couple more times. And then lo and behold, three years later, now we have about 18 to 20 stores. Um, again, the only reason I don't know is because we have like four or five that are, are are in like in the renovation standpoints we've just had we have two doors that we have leases signed and they start paying rent in about a couple of days uh we have like 11 we have 11 units under contract right now so that's kind of where we're at at the moment units in 2022 under contract to purchase yeah exactly like right now like like they'll close by the by the end of may so wow wow yeah. so wait so wait you you said a lot so let's unpack right because I <laughs> so one you had a goal of just, I'm going to just say freedom, entrepreneurship. Yeah. So you started the one business, but you knew it was like, all right, I'm good at it, but this isn't, something's missing. This isn't quite it. Yeah. But in the interim of that, you didn't give up on it. You stayed the course with what you started. But one of the things that you you mentioned, you you found a mentor. You found somebody to help guide you. Yes, sir. Um, not once, but twice. But the first person you invested 10K. Can you just talk about your first feelings of having to give somebody $10,000 that was basically promising to help you, you know, double or triple your 10,000? Because I mean, if I go on Instagram, there's always somebody willing to take my money to help coach me, mentor me. But you know, what made this person special or what, what did you feel that helped you like be comfortable to invest 10,000 basically in yourself? Yeah. That's that, Anthony. That's a great question, and I think that I'm going to answer that in two different ways. I'm going to answer it for everybody else out there, and I'll kind of go back into my situation because I think everyone's situation is a little different. So I actually had multiple opportunities before that where I came to sales pitches or I got in in in, in conversations where I didn't actually invest because I didn't I wasn't actually in a place where I felt like I was ready. Like regardless if that was true or not, my perception was that I wasn't ready. And um, it, so it took me a couple, a couple of those times with different mentors, different people before I was actually ready to make that big commitment. But honestly, it was just like the pain got high enough where I had been in the business for five years. I was beating my head against the wall. I was like, either this is going to work or I'm going to get out of the business. Um, and so that was kind of my decision making process. And when it came to the trust in, uh, in Alex, a lot of it, ironically, was really, really silly. I was, I was, looking, for, I was looking for something to believe in. And so again, I was in the fitness industry and I was someone who lifted heavy weights, right? And so my, my belief was always that you can't fake strength, right? Like that was always something I always said. And so I remember going onto his Facebook and his first video he had on there was a video of him squatting like 455 pounds for like a triple. I was like, you can't fake that, <laughs> right? Uh, and like, I honestly had never heard of him before. Like I got, a, I was, I, I opted one of his Facebook ads and within 24 hours, I'd given 10K. And so again, it was, it was a combination of me just being ready and also me looking for something to believe in. Cause ultimately really what I was, I was not really believing in him. I was believing in myself. Um, 
And so th I think that's maybe the biggest thing I, I can share with you is that like, ultimately now I invest a lot of money into to mentors and coaches. And it's because I believe in myself so much that I, I, I will pull something from them. I will get, I will get the value out of it and it's not on them. It's on me. I like that. Um, but then I, the other thing I like when you said about, you can't fake the strength. I think at some point you also probably said, look, I can't fake this thing that I keep saying I want and I need the one yeah bet on myself financially because now that also puts some urgency behind it because hey if i spend this money and don't get it back my wife's going to be mad or yeah. I'm homeless you know but whatever comes first <laughs> but in addition to that you know you can't at some point there's only but so many youtube videos audio books classes programs you can go to without taking action and i mean you saw the hands first yeah. Or, well yeah you saw it first where you invested this money and next thing you know you said in the first 30 days, you got 30 new clients, I think. Within the first seven days, man, the first 30 days, we got a hundred clients. Like it was like, we went, so legitimately we had done $5,000 the month before. And that month we did over $50,000. Like it was like, it was nuts. It was nutty. It was, I mean, it was a lot of freaking work. Like I don't want to undersell how much freaking work it was, but it was worth it. <laughs> Right. No, but the, and then the, the cool thing is, and I tell people, this is for like anybody I feel like that's in the real estate game. So people are like, yo, I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna flip these houses, but you don't realize yeah. in between buying houses in between looking for rentals, tenants in between rehabbing them to sell. There's a lot of gaps where you don't get paid. Like I'm literally rehabbing 100%. three buildings right now and I don't get paid, but every day I'm paying, like the, tomorrow I'm paying a contract of 5,000. It's more than I'm yeah. paying 1,200. Like every day, every other day, everybody else gets paid, but you, until you get to the finish line. So it's cool or good to hear, even though you didn't have a traditional nine to five, your nine to five was your business, which generated enough cash to help you have a lifestyle, but then also you took the cash, lived on you know a certain percentage that you could use the rest to invest and like you said, now you're not working for the money. The money is now working for you. 100%, 100%. And that's always the goal. You know, um, we at, I think of everything as a season, Anthony. So but we all have seasons in our lives. And that first season in my business was grinding. And it was a, it was a testament of faith. Because ultimately, like, everything has a gestational period. And so the way I love to look at this is like the bigger the goal, the bigger the, the gestational period. So a mouse, a mouse takes about two weeks from the moment it gets pregnant to, to it gives birth. Okay. A, a human baby takes about nine months to get right. from, from pregnancy to birth. An elephant, it's 22 months before it gets pregnant to it gives birth, right? And so it's a great, it's a great visual to understand that the bigger your goal, that bigger that gestational period. And right. so a lot of times in business, we want big goals. We want to be millionaires. We want to have <laughs> passive income. We want to set our family for life. And we all want it tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right. And so it's having that faith is that first season in almost everybody's entrepreneurial journey that they need to, to learn that skill set. And then there's many skill sets along the way. But in my specific um, journey, it was learning how to save money and how to be be disciplined and also at the same time, like have the vision of once I get this money, what am I going to do with it? Right. Um, and then of course, then you have the, then you have the season of learning how to make money multiply. And then now we're really in the season of how do we make money matter? Um, and that's really something that is really fulfilling is when your basic needs are, are met. And then you're like, your goal every single day is like, how do I serve? How do I, how do I use this money to change Anthony's life? How do I use this money to change, Tim's life, right? And like going out there and like really changing the world. Um, and one of the best quotes I heard, so I was at the Clever Investor Summit last weekend in Vegas. So if any of you guys were out there or you guys heard about it, it was like one of the most amazing real estate events out there. We had Cody Sperber out there. We had Cole Hatter. We had Pace Morgan. We had Jamal Damji. Robert Kiyosaki was speaking. Um, There's just lots of lots of cool guys out there. But one of the things that Pace Morby, who is actually one of my mentors in the real estate game now, he said, he said, life changing money is enough money to change someone else's life. And that really like stuck with me. I was like, that's the kind of life changing money that I want. So. Oh, if I'm hearing you correctly, 
it's no longer about you. It's about how you can help other people with the things you do, though. Exactly. That's exactly Not, right. But uh, there's also a season, right, Anthony? And you know this as well. It's like we built, like we spent our, we spent a, a good season of our lives. Not only we started investing in real estate, but then me and my wife, we had a, we had a cash flow goal. And that cash flow goal, and again, this is straight out of Rich Dad Poor Dad, so it's not something that we, that we made up. But once our income from our cash flow exceeded our expenses, uh, then all of a sudden we became financially independent, right? Which means we no longer needed to work. All of our basic expenses were covered by cash flow. Again, like that didn't include our business. It literally only included our real estate. That was our first goal. And once we kind of hit that, um, it was like, oh, all of a sudden the pressure went off and it got easier because there was no longer this pressure of now I have to make money. Now it's like, oh, now I get to. And now I get to do it on my terms and it becomes a game and fun. So let me ask you this, because I, I feel like I was, I, I know that feeling you're talking about when mm -hmm. you're no longer operating from doing deals or doing certain work as a necessity. Yeah. To Huge. Be, to do base. Cause a lot of people again, don't realize when you're in the entrepreneur world or whatever your income space is, when you're going to work because you feel like you have to go just to get a check on Friday, or when you're taking a deal that's not the best deal just because you're like, at least it's something that'll put food on the table. Yeah. But most of the time, those deals backfire because they weren't good deals and it wasn't enough spread. But again, you were operating from a scarcity mindset. So can you talk about maybe that mindset of you just said, you know, hey, now we're doing deals that we're handpicking and being meticulous and strategic about. Um, but how do you get from that scarcity mindset or even like now everybody wants to get in real estate and they want to jump the first deal. So how do you work on that patience and, you know, lock in on, Hey, this is what, this is what I'm, I'm aiming for. And this is the only thing I'm going to settle for. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's, it's the answer, right? Or it's the question. And I think that answer is a little bit different for every single person, but I'll tell you a little story. And this is a story that I got from one of my business partners who I do real estate with. And so we were sitting there having lunch one day and he was talking about how him and his wife, they do this thing where they give away money every single month. Right. Just and like, he was like, what's that? Just give it away. Yeah. Yeah. So they have this, so they have this game they play where they just give away money. And he's like, so how started though was when we, this was, this was like five years ago, he said, that they knew they wanted to be givers and they wanted to give money away, but they didn't have any money. So they set a goal that they were going to give a hundred dollars away once a year. Right. Okay. So, so that first year they gave away a hundred dollars to just a random act of kindness. And they said, it was just like one of the most fulfilling things ever. And again, like he might like, they didn't have any money to give away. They just like, they like literally had to, had to budget away this hundred dollars that they gave away. And he's like, but there was so, like the feeling that just felt so right and it felt so good that they're like, we're doing it again. But next year we're doing it every six months. Okay. So every six months they gave away a hundred dollars. And so that was the second year and they're like, wow, like this is freaking amazing. And so the third year they did it every quarter. Okay. So the third year they did it every quarter and the fourth year they're like, I think we can step this up a little bit. Let's do it every single month. The fifth year they gave it away every single week. This year, this year, they're giving away $1,000 every single month. That's $12,000. His goal now is to give away $100,000 every single year. Like that's, the, like that's gonna be next year's goal, right? Okay. And so the reason I tell you that is because it all started with him just saying, I want to give, right? And he didn't have any money to give. And so when it comes back to this, this, this belief in having abundance or scarcity, it's not about actually how many resources you have. It all comes down to your mentality, your mindset and like, Start to start to say no to deals, even when you need that deal. That's actually the key, right? It's saying no when you feel like you need it, and then all of a sudden you say no to it. And you're like, oh, I actually didn't need it, and I feel so. I feel so empowered. Right. I'm not being dependent on a specific deal or a specific person or a specific thing. And you start to realize that like we're a lot more powerful than we think we are. We have a lot more abundance in our life than we than we can actually see. And so. That's the reality. Now, I think there's always always be a game along the way that we continue to get excited about and like set an income goal, set those things that it almost like gives you permission to be like, you know what, you're right, Logan. Like I now I see evidence. So at first it's just a belief. And then all of a sudden you start to like find evidence that 
I actually do have financial freedom. I actually can look at my, my financial statement. I can see that I have income coming in every single month. And then you start to believe it even more. But in the very beginning, it really is like playing that game of looking for opportunities to be abundant, even when it feels like there's no way in heck that you should be. I got you. I like that. All right. Well, so, and I know a lot of people want me to touch on the real estate part. So we appreciate the gyms, the discipline part, right? So let's shift gears real quick in the real estate part. So you said in just over three years, roughly, not even a full three years, this year alone, you're under contract for 11 units. Yeah. And you acquired 18 before the 11 units. So like, can you share with us the secret sauce? Is there a secret sauce that you have for purchasing all these units? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it just like anything, it comes down to, it just comes down to experience. And, you know, right now you're catching me in a season where we're starting to go like this, but if you just would have caught me three months ago, you know, <laughs> I'd be in a different season. And, you know, in the next, in the next year, you'd be like, dude, like, how'd you get to 150 units? Right. So it's just like, it's all about the season that we're in. So I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm going to do my best to try to set it for the audience so they can, so this basically can apply to them and they can really use this formula, which I've started to start to see patterns. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before you give them the formula, I need you okay. guys to drop some fire emojis and make sure you have your yeah. notepad because I heard part of this today. And when I heard it, I'm telling you, the light bulb started going off. So let me see some fire emojis so I know you guys are ready. Yeah. Let's get some emojis going. And, and let me preface the story. So I was at I was at dinner last week in Las Vegas. I was actually with my gym mentor. Um, and just to put in perspective, like, they just, so they sold their gym coaching business a couple months ago for minority share like 60 something million dollars like insane they got like a lot of money right <laughs> and so it was, it was funny listening to them because they're on a whole nother level um right. and so again if you guys don't look him up he's on alex ramosi he's on youtube uh he's very really, really really smart guy and so uh it was we're sitting there having dinner with them and they were talking about how going from three to ten million dollars a year in revenue is just like it's like obvious it's just like it's like duh i'm just like me and my wife are just sitting there like yeah duh right <laughs> just like joking around but in their minds they've done it they've literally done it three times with their own businesses and then now they that's that is actually the businesses they they buy a minority share into let's say uh anything is business and they help you grow from three to ten million dollars like that is actually what their business is now so like they literally understand the process okay. and so the reason why i think that's important is because when you start to see patterns you start to you actually start to think it's really obvious and so now that um, I'm starting to see some success. I have some patterns that I want to share with your audience, which is this is ready for the for the writer down stuff, right? Look, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. All right. So, like I saw Anthony today, there's basically um, three things that every single deal that you need. Okay, you need someone to find a deal, you need someone to fund that deal, and then you need to be able to manage that deal. Okay. And so the reason that it took me three years to basically get to 15 units is because I thought I had to find the deal myself. I thought I had to fund the deal myself and I thought I had to manage the deal myself. And so like, those are all skill sets that take time and take experience. Again, they're, they're gestational periods and all three of those things. And so how we've been able to go a lot faster now is I understand that I don't need to find the deal. I don't need to fund the deal and I don't need to manage the deal anymore. I actually need to find the people who are really good at finding deals. I need to find the people who want to bring the capital to the deal or get, or bring the lending to the table who I'll, I'll give a portion of the profits away to them so they can play as well and then same thing on the management side i want to find someone who is, is either an amazing manager of short-term rentals or long-term rentals and so that's how we've been able to scale really fast as of late is that i've just have found people to do those pieces of the equation now my job is just to basically put those pieces together got you. so if i'm hearing you correctly you're forming partnerships and businesses yeah. and you know relationships with people that do different things and your job is just to put the pieces together. Exactly. And I mean, the relationship game, as you know, I think that's why we're having this conversation, man, because you and I are in new deals together, right? It's all about relationships, about earning someone's trust and like figuring out like, what is your superpower? And then I'm looking at it like, how do I help Anthony out? Like where, like, where can I help him grow his real estate portfolio or, or real, or even help his agent business? And I'm trying to, I'm trying to try to wedge my way into your world by adding value. And if everyone looked at that, they could look, into every single person they could find a way to add value to that to that to that individual that's how you get into a lot of deals is you just really just add value okay so when we're talking about deals or your deals are you a flipper are you a buy and hold person what what are you into it's a great question yeah so we 
only buy and hold. So that's our goal is it's a wealth game for us. And every situation um, is obviously every, excuse me, every individual situation is a little bit different. So again, like we are very blessed that we came into this game where we didn't need the cash. We don't need the cash, like the big dumps of cash, but a lot of people might need to be, I need to flip a couple houses to put some cash in their pocket uh, so that they can eat and they can, and they can survive and they can live. Again, right. Us personally, we're in a situation where we just want to hold property. We're trying to build our wealth. Um, but I also have lots of, of partners who also like they'll flip, properties every now and then just to put some cash in their pocket but ultimately everyone's goal should be to hold some real estate again if you can the more you can hold man just the wealthier you're going to be that's just the name of the game so if i'm a new investor and i'm just saying whether i'm in philly whether i'm in montana yeah. would you suggest i start out you know seeking people out that could be financial partners or should you feel or do you think it's better for me to invest my own money first before I start taking on other people's money. Yeah, so if I would not, I would invest my own money into someone else's deal before I would, in, before I would take someone else's money as a, as a rookie or as a newbie in the real estate game. Like it's a, like it should be the holy grail for you to take someone else's money and be able to number one, secure that capital, right? So I have two rules when it comes to whether, whether I lend money, because I do lend money to, to other people, but also lend, like people lend money to me. Okay. Number one, it's the return of capital. That's rule number one, okay? Rule number two, then return on capital. And so a lot of times people are only concerned about what, what, what kind of return can I get or what kind of return can I give this person when the number one focus should be just how do I make sure that I secure this capital that I can always return? Right. Um, and so when it comes to someone who's just getting started, if you have some capital, I highly recommend investing with somebody else. Like, use their experience, use their wisdom, use their track record to wedge yourself into a deal, right? Everyone, even like me, like you and I, like we're both always looking for people who want to partner with us who have money that they want to either lend or they want to become equity on. And mm -hmm. so they can, like the money you make is not important. It's the experience that you get. It's building a track record that you get. And honestly, it's the relationship that you get that will serve you for the rest of your freaking life. Now, hopefully you should make some money or at least get your money back, but that should not be the main goal, especially when you first get started. Right. What the cool thing is, too, if you do do that, as far as the investor, a lot of lenders, especially hard money lenders, they want to know what your experience is. It's not a lot of exactly. institutions that will give you money as a newbie. Right. Mm -hmm. not, some people will, but not a lot. Right. But yeah. with that, doing what you just said, like, hey, if I've got 20,000, hey, let me partner with Logan. Let me partner with Anthony on one of their deals because now when I go to fill out my application to do my own deal, I can use the last transaction as my experience because I was part of that transaction. Yeah. So now you did three things. You got experience, you learned, and you possibly got a return on your investment. Yeah. And you can't you can't get that, you know. No. I think it's really important that you just said that too is because as you start to do fix and flips or you start to do burst strategies and you need to get hard money, like the, the, the terms that you get is based on your experience. And so like when I go to a hard money lender, I get the best terms. I get what, and again, and every lender is a little bit different, but for example, like the lender I use, they have three tiers. They have tier two, tier one, and tier zero. And when tier zero, I get the best rates. I get to borrow the most amount of money. And it's a huge advantage when you're in that game because it just means that it can save you a lot of money, but also it means that let's say that a lender is only willing to give you 75%, whereas I have a lender who will give me 100%. That means you have to raise a whole bunch of money from private money, uh, which is just a whole nother battle in itself of trying to raise money from friends, family members, and people out there to try to um, fund the gap, as I call it. Because most lenders, they always want you to have bring some skin to the table, right? I like that. So starting out were you doing big rehab projects or were you doing like little light rehabs lipstick situations oh yeah dude our first our first like four deals we didn't we did all almost turnkey so when i say lipstick it was like paint and flooring right that was it and it wasn't until we got a i came across a a full gut job that i was like i realized i didn't have the skill sets i didn't have the experience to do it all by myself so that's when i actually reached out to at one time he was a mentor uh, then he became my partner uh, in the situation because not only did he have the capital that could help me 
bring the the money to the table because it was a cash purchase, but also he had a full team and he had the experience of doing multiple renovations, multiple flips, multiple burst strategies. And I really relied on him heavy in, in that situation that I didn't even, I, I did zero renovation work, right? Zero. And that was the only way we were able to do the first deal. And then from there I was like, wow, I don't have to do this. And that's when I started to realize the leverage of somebody else managing a deal, right? And so managing just doesn't mean, you know, long-term, short-term rental, it can be managing a construction project as well, which Anthony, as you know, that is like one of the most, it can be one of the most challenging things if you don't have an experienced contractor or you're, or you're not an experienced project manager. Yes, yes. And to your point, that was a game changer for me in my last two years of business because yeah. I a, a good construction team around me. I have a good general contractor, property man, project manager, and project manager. I'm able to focus on the things that I'm, you know, one better suited at, but two, the things that help them keep getting return customer for me yeah. because I focus on what I'm good at finding deals and turning them into rentals or turning them into flip projects. Yeah. So, you know, those people that always know, look, this year we know we're going to get at least two to three properties and projects from Anthony. At, yep. at bare minimum, which is which is amazing. Um, so, with the rentals, you're doing buy and hold, and then you're raising the money. So now, are you like fully doing deals where you aren't using any of your money, or are you are you putting some of your money in it as well? That's a great question. So, I have another mentor. As you can as you can tell, I have lots of mentors, right? And so, one of my other <laughs> mentors, his name is his name is Chris Crone. Again, very big on YouTube, been with him for the last two years. And one of the things that he told me a couple months ago, he said, Logan, you should never put your own money into a deal ever again. It's like, you have enough track record now that you've proven that not only can you secure money, but you, you can now make money. And he's like, you should give people, other people the opportunity to invest in your deals. To number one, make sure that you're always able to buy deals constantly. And number two, give other people opportunity to make money with you. And so once I kind of, I really took up the heart. And so moving forward, we don't put any of our own money into the deals anymore because as soon as it does, it, it makes us, it'll put a capital constraint on us. Uh, that means that if we use our own money, we could potentially be limited to how many deals we can actually do. So we're always raising money. And we're, so that means we're always buying deals deep enough to make sure that there's enough of the pie to go around for every single person. Otherwise we don't buy the deal. Mm, I like that. And when we're talking about, the private investors that are working with you for capital well, giving you capital for projects, how long is, you know, average a person investing with you in your projects? Yeah. So every single person has their own situation, have their own goals and they have their own ideas, what they want to do with the money. And again, some people, they want to come in and not only do they want to lend money, but they actually want the experience. So this is what a lot of people who, who invest with us is they, they want to be real estate investors themselves, but they don't, have never done a deal or they haven't ever done private money lending. And so they'll do the deal and they'll want to be in for like six to 12 months because they really just want that money to come back to them and they want to use it to go do their own deals eventually. But in the meantime, they want the experience. They want to go through the process. They obviously want the track record as well. We also have people who say, dude, like I want you to keep this money for as long as you freaking can. Like, don't give it back to me. <laughs> right. Um, and so, it really, it really just depends on every situation. And so again, we have, we have enough deals that we can put people in for six months and then we can replace them with somebody else after the end of the six months or after the end of the six months, a lot of times people, here's actually what happens, Anthony, is that people are like, yeah, I don't want my money in there for six months because I think that in the next six months, I'll, I at least want the opportunity to be able to pull that money out and go to something else. But a lot of times what happens is that in six months, they're in pretty much in the same situation. And they're like, hey, can you just like, roll my money forward or can you put it into another deal? And right. so we like to give people the flexibility that they can have their money somewhat um, somewhat flexible because I think that's what people really don't like to be tied down to anything. And we're okay with that as well because we understand that like that's how, how it goes. Now, if somebody is like, I want this money and, and I never want to see it again, that might be a better equity play than being like a, a private money lender. So again, everyone's situation is a little bit different. Got so, and I guess with the tears, with the giving of the money or being the private investor, if I only give you the money for six months, I make less money than what I would get if I gave it to you for over a three year period. Yeah, I mean, just 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 statistically saying, like most people think they want the money back and they realize that every single day their money is not being put to work, they're losing out 
on interest. You're losing out. And so while you might think that you're earning 10% on your money because you did a 10%, you did it three different times. If you actually do it, if you actually annualize it and see what you actually got your money, like what actually the money came back to you, a lot of people find out they're only making like six or 7% because there's gaps. There's gaps in like when, for instance, like if someone's doing like a fix and flip or they're doing something like that, like sometimes you, a lot of times there's actually gaps where people can have their money out. And so that's one of the advantages of working with someone like us who we only do buying holds um, is that the money, like we always have a place for, for people's money and it's always sitting in cash flowing properties. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now that you have been able to, you know, purchase these properties, you know, and over the, over three years, you've got 11 projects uh, under contract now, like what's next? Like how many houses are, are too many houses are like, how do you continue to, you know, scratch that itch of being uh, ambitious being that, you know, you're reaching all your goals? Yeah. It honestly goes back to what I talked about a little bit earlier. It's that life changing money is enough money to change. You there? Yep, I'm back. I think my phone is just slowly dying out here. No. But uh, so, so you were getting ready to say something really, really dope. Yeah, so life changing money is enough money to change someone else's life. And so that is really our goals is to have enough money, Anthony, Dude, we want to change the planet. Like that's we look at guys like Grant Cardone. We look at the guys like Kiyosaki. We look at the guys like Alex Hermosi and Pace Morby, like Jamil Damji, like those big guys in the real estate game. The reason that keeps them going, uh, like Steve Trangs, right? Like Cody Sperber's. The thing that keeps them going is they love to help other people. They love to help other people get into investing. They love to help other people hit their financial freedom goals. To hit, to watch them get their first rental. Right, to get them they have thought, to see them get their tent rental and be somewhat a part of that journey. And that's, dude, that's our goal for sure. And so one of the things that I've heard from Chris Crone, from Pace Morby, uh, from, from Alex Ramosi, things I heard from them consistently is that when you have about $50,000 a month in cash flow, which is like net, like that's like after everything's paid for, like you're actually putting $50,000 a month in your bank account. It's like, that's pretty much enough money to like literally do anything you want in your life. Like, like everything like these guys are like they do a lot more than that but they're like right. once you get about fifty thousand dollars a month it's like you can pretty much do whatever you want right and so that's our goal for this year is we want to hit fifty thousand dollars a month in cash flow from our real estate so that's one big goal we have for this year and then we want to acquire 20 million dollars in real estate holdings this year as well so those are our two goals that we want to hit this year and again with the intention being that we just are we're just in a such an abundant place anthony that we can give our time away, we can give our money away, and most importantly, like we can give our attention away. And I think that's like one of the most, man, one of the most like fulfilling things in life is just being able to truly wake up every single day and just serve, serve, serve. So that's our goal. Uh, that, that's dope. And I, and I love hearing things like that because again, you know, you think your goals are big, then you talk to somebody else's who has goals that are bigger and it's like, oh, I got some work to do. I got, but it's, but it's positive, you know, work to be to be done so that's definitely amazing and definitely inspiring um yeah. so if i i'll go back to like the new investor so if i'm starting out and i'm saying hey outside of the books the rich dad poor dads the e-myth the uh, millionaire next door what other steps might you suggest for me to get started or for me to take on my journey in real estate yeah man i think they should work work with you, man. Like, honestly, like go be an apprentice to Anthony, like go up there, say, what can I do? How can I help you? And try to find a way to serve someone who knows what the heck they're doing. I would do that all day long. That's, that's actually how I got into the game is I just kept on asking questions. Like, I kept on putting myself around people who knew what the hell they were doing and trying to figure out how to add value to them. And so mm -hmm. like for you, it's like, you have lots of stuff going on. You're like, you're, you're heavy in the real estate game. You're, you're an agent, you flip and you hold like they're like, you're the triple you're the, you're the trifecta, dude. Like, go work for this guy. Um, that's honestly what I would do because ultimately, education is great. Watching podcasts like this, watching um, lots of YouTube stuff, it, it's cool, right? At least, at least, you're, at least you're, your brain is consuming good stuff. But if you really want to go to the next level and you want to see some change and transformation, transformation in your life, you got to take some action. And the biggest mistake people make is they try to do it all them damn selves. And I did that too, dude. And I'm sure you've been in that, in that same uh, pathway and 
when you first get started, you almost don't want to tell people. You're like, I have these goals, but I want to keep them quiet, and so I'm going to do it myself. And <laughs> if I don't, if I'm not successful, at least nobody knows it myself, and it's okay. I don't, I don't feel like an idiot. But honestly, you should tell the world, right? You should tell the world what you want. I want fifty thousand dollars in cash flow. I want twenty million dollars in real estate. And you know what, Anthony? At the end of 2022, you should be calling me up, I'm like, bro, like, how much cash flow do you have? How many, how, how many assets do you own, brother? Right? Like, that's the kind of people like you and I are like, well, we want to hold each other accountable. And I think if, if someone who's newer, you can like put yourself in an environment like that, man, it's so much more fun. Right? And you'll spend so much less time beating your head against the wall. And mm -hmm. you can just have someone drag you, drag you through the mud of success. Right? So you can either try to like, march through it by yourself, or you can have someone like Anthony, just drag your ass right through it. No, it's funny. A lot of people take pride in saying, I got it out the mud or I did it the hard way. Yeah. You don't have to do it the hard way. Again, figure out how to add value or put yeah. your position to, you know, again, not have to bump your head. Because if you get around the right people, like you said, what took me, I've been doing this since 2014. So what took me eight yeah. years? You, like you said, took you three years. And, you know, you're, you're still growing. We're all still growing. But again, if you put yourself around the right people, you don't have to struggle. It's okay not to struggle. It's okay not to have the, you know, figure it out on your own. You don't have to do that. And again, that's why we do these, these interviews and why we connect with people from all walks of life. Because again, we're really all trying to get to the same thing of, you know, freedom, mobility, opportunity, and being able to take care of the people around us. So again, if you can share that with people, not only are you going to get somebody to help you hold yourself accountable, but they're going to push you to keep thinking bigger, 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 bigger. So I'm not going to lie. I got my notebook. I got some notes here. I probably need to rethink some of my goals for 2022 now, Logan. So I appreciate that from you. Um, but I'm but I'm excited, though. I'm definitely excited. And uh, we don't forget, we got to set a time so we can talk about that, uh, that, that group. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll figure out when we do that man we'll definitely figure that out but if there's anything that i didn't ask that you want to tell the people or anything that you just want to share that i may have missed um definitely feel free yeah no you know what i think that you asked you honestly did you asked some freaking amazing questions you're a great listener uh just a wealth of of knowledge so again if you guys if you guys know anthony like go go like actually ask him what you can do to help him or go like look at like look at his business see how you can help him out obviously the guy knows what he's doing he's been in the game for eight years like that's like almost a freaking decade like that's awesome <laughs> um yeah i think the only thing i'd like to to leave with again was another nugget i took which was a big epiphany for me and maybe it's a, it'll help somebody else out is understanding the money game and so there's four different phases to the money game the first one being you got like you got to make money i think most people they so like they're so focused on that one they don't even realize that there's actually games after that but the first make money the second one is actually manage that money right just because you make money like if you spend all that money and it goes out the door then you still ain't got no money so make money manage money third piece the thing that we're talking a lot about today is how to multiply money right how to make your money grow babies and how to how to how to make it do things without you actually having to invest more time and energy into it and the fourth one we talked a little bit about today as well is make money matter which is really giving back and so four games make money manage money multiply money and make money matter so hopefully that helps somebody just understand like there is a process and that's what keeps you going even when you like when you have enough money to make to serve your own needs that's why you continue to grow is because there's a lot of out there people who you who you can help and uh if you if you can man you should be out there trying to help as many people as, as, as you possibly can so that's all i want to share with my friend uh well we definitely appreciate it i don't know i how long is the flight from uh philadelphia montana you know <laughs> i went to i went to new jersey a couple years ago and they took me from montana which is right here and it took me over here to seattle and then all the way to new jersey and that was like a five-hour flight so it'll it probably only be about a four-hour flight i bet <laughs> not too too bad that's not too too bad you know we might have to might have to learn how to ski or come and look at some multifamily out there yeah philadelphia exactly are crazy but you know we're, we're always looking to you know be open-minded to other opportunities so but now nah, i definitely 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 appreciate you again for tuning in with me if anybody wants to connect with you where where can they find you yeah best way is on instagram man just, just the same way that you and i connected so at logan lee manzanares you can find me on there um 
my DMs get blown up, but I always respond to the DMs. Um, I'm always posting on there twice a day, every day, and post on stories and post on projects that we have going on, post my family on there, all like all my thoughts, uh, all that stuff. I just like, I'm very much an open book and I love to share. So yeah, if you guys want to follow me, I'm at Logan Lee Manzanares. Check out the story, check out the posts. And Anthony, just appreciate you so much for having me on here. Is uh, dude, like, like these type of things are so fun. The fact that we get to share, um, like we get to share our brains together with audience, and then like you and I will definitely uh, continue to connect and, and find ways to just stay in each other's um, airspace because ultimately, like proximity is power, and that's the name of the game for sure. No, well, look, I told you I got to rethink my plans. You know, you said fifty k a month, so it's like, all right, I I have some work to do, and I was trying to be modest with my goals. So it's Oh. 50k a month is the number like you said i'm pretty sure i could change my life my 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 parents life you know yeah. life with with that kind of money but the dope thing is once i set it up i don't have to do the heavy lifting no more the tenants will keep bringing that money in over and over again so you know so definitely definitely appreciate that um but again good luck to you congrats on those 11 units and we appreciate you. So, you know, again, when we connect, we'll make sure we share this out with everybody. But thank you again. And you guys be safe. Have a good week. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Happy Thursday. Have a good one. Bye.